Hello and welcome to yet another episode of As always, let me remind you that there's not such thing as a best distro, but there is such a thing as a best distro for you, I think, and it's our job to make it easier for you to find this perfect distro, or rather, best distro. So what I'm going to do today is divide this video into parts. Firstly, I'm going to go through all of the most known and traditional distros that ship with KD Plasma, and I'm going to cover on how they ship KD Plasma, how well they work, and I will not focus actually at all on the differences from a distro point of view, such as the package package manager and such, because that's not really the point, I'm going to talk about what experience would they give you for KD Plasma, because this video is about that. Secondly, I'm going to go through some interesting distros that take a completely different approach, that is, they still use KD Plasma, but they mix it up a lot, and then they include applications that might not be KD on ones, or, you know, the ones that you're used to, so it will be quite an interesting trip, and of course, we start with KD Neon because it's the KD distro, isn't it? Well, actually, it isn't, according to its own FAQ. Rarely do developers call it a distro, even. And I think that originated from some political issues when KD Neon initially moved to KD because KD didn't want to make it look as, it, as if it was competing against other distributions that were shipping KD. So KD comes in four variants, which is user, testing, unstable, and developer. So what's the difference between those? So user edition simply has the latest KD Plasma things that have been released. So it's a rolling release. As soon as something is released for KD Plasma, you get it. Testing gives you a glimpse into the future by giving you also things that are pre-released, whereas Unstable simply gives you updates every single day with the very latest stuff that is in Git Master, and you can use that, you know, to be a developer or test the very, very newest changes. If you're a developer, the developer edition is the testing edition, but with some libraries to make developing easier out of the box. So these last three, obviously, you should only use if you are a developer or know what you're doing. As an example, if you are a beta tester and you really want to try out and do some QA for KD Plasma, which would be awesome, by the way. If you're just a user, then go for the user edition, which, however, does have some flaws. Firstly, I have to remind you that, yes, it is rolling for KD Plasma. However, it is LTS that is the long-term support version, so very stable, but also old packages for everything that's not KD Plasma, so Ubuntu itself. So if you're used to you know, new packages, you don't get those in KD Neon. As much as I love KD Plasma, using something the same very day it has been released might still be prone to bugs. Sometimes we accidentally ship bugs to users and we notice when users start to complain, sadly. So if you want a super stable system, I would still suggest waiting for a week or so for the first bug fix to arrive. It is also important to know that Neon has messed up in the past in some regards. The latest transition from a major release to the next one, not for KDE, which is always rolling, obviously, but for the Ubuntu base, has actually batched a lot of systems. Like, I've seen so many people who said, I run the update script and then my system didn't wake up anymore. And that has actually happened to my girlfriend too. So I experienced that. They also somehow shipped KD Frameworks 5.99, which contained an essential bug fix for KD Plasma very late, like at least a week late. And that was so weird, especially because it contained such an important bug fix. I don't know how 5.98 was that broken, but still, for something that's supposed to be super rolling for KDE, not shipping an important KDE Frameworks version immediately was very weird. It also had some issues with packaging that I'm not too aware or expert about, but in the past, stuff like backends for VLC and that kind of stuff has given me issues and I've discovered that it was neon bugs, so be aware of that. So 
it is a very interesting distribution, to be clear. It is a distribution, but of course it has its own issues. The next one is Kubuntu. So what is Kubuntu relationship with KDE? Well, they're basically part of it. I mean, technically, the web page says it's developed by Canonical, which is patron of KDE, but actually the developers of Kubuntu are often part of the KDE community, if not developers of KDE Plasma itself. So Kubuntu has few changes to the KDE Plasma desktop. It has the same wallpaper now. It didn't use to. It has its own Kubuntu theme, which of course you can change and revert back to Breeze in just a click. And you might also see some small changes here and there. As an example, I think they might be using single click selects folder instead of open, opening them. Or maybe they're not using margin areas for the panel. If you don't know about that, you won't notice. And maybe they're also not using adaptive transparency. I'm not sure about that though. And they might be even using wobbly windows by default unless I'm actually using Kubuntu right now, but it's not Kubuntu Kubuntu. It's a Kubuntu that shipped with a Kubuntu Focus computer. And I don't know if there's any changes that were added to Kubuntu on top of that, or if those are changes that Kubuntu applies on top of KDE Plasma. So there are some changes, you have to find them out. Kubuntu also is not rolling. It releases every six months and every new release packs up the latest version of Ubuntu and KDE Plasma. There is a Kubuntu Devel release upgrade tool to switch from one release to the next one. And this system makes it so that it's less ble bleeding edge, but maybe more daily stable if you're into that. There is though an LTS version, which uses both Ubuntu LTS and KDE Plasma LTS, whereas KDE Neon was using Ubuntu LTS, but bleeding KDE Plasma. Should you use the LTS version of Kubuntu? Probably not if you don't know what that is. Although this would probably require its own video to explain carefully. But let's just say that it's more meant for like, I think companies who need super stable systems that never change. But as far as bug fixes go, the stability isn't significantly higher compared to the latest version of KD Plasma, unless it has just been released. Kubuntu does come with a bit more applications out of the box. Some people call it bloat. I personally disagree. I feel like there are applications out of the box that you might need, but if you're the kind of person that doesn't like that, be aware of that. And also an important note that you might not like, some applications come as snaps, as an example, Firefox, and you might not like that. Personally, I don't actually. Next up is a Fedora KDE, which as far as I'm aware, ships KD Plasma completely vanilla or with very small changes. And the idea is the same one as Kubuntu. You publish an update every six months. Fedora KDE is also able to switch between major versions. So from Fedora 36 to 37 to 38 in the future. And you should not have any issue regarding that. It's very interesting that Fedora often tries to be the most modern, I think, KD Plasma distro as an example they were one of the first, if not the first distribution to switch to Wayland uh, for default for KDE Plasma, which will give you a better KDE experience, no doubt about that. However, it's still not ready for all users and you might see that it doesn't work for you. So you have to try it out and if that doesn't work, you just switch back to X11. Fedora also offers a very interesting project, which is different from the KDE spin of Fedora, and that is Fedora Kinoite. Kinoite, I don't know how that's pronounced. This is one of the very few immutable systems with KDE Plasma in it. Basically, you install applications as flat packs, and for OS changes, you use RPM OS3, which has atomic and safe updates and it uses Podman container engine out of the box. So if you're just a user, this makes the OS particularly rock stable and solid at the expenses of not being able to tweak it under the hood, but you shouldn't care about that. If anything goes wrong, there's also this night nice feature that allows you to switch to the previous version, like do a rollback. And it also has friendly developers who come to Academy this for the entirety of Fedora actually. OpenSUSE, which I 
think it's pronounced like that. Not as tricky as it seems, we just prefer you say... It's probably not. It's actually the distro I have less experience with. It's the only one that I've never used actually. So it has both a rolling release like KD Neon and a non-rolling one like Fedora and Kubuntu. Now the rolling release is called Thumbleweed or Tumbleweed, I don't know. But please know that Tumbleweed is rolling for both KD Plasma and all other packages. This is very different compared to KD Neon, which is only rolling for KD stuff. In Thumbleweed, you get everything new. So I think you kinda need more to know what you're doing in this particular case, if you want to use Thumbleweed, but you can also just use Leap. So OpenSUSE does apply some changes uh, on top of KD. As an example, they have this tool called KSUSE install, to help you install extra features, such as multimedia support or plugins, not on the download media, fair enough. They also say they have attractive branding, which I guess means they have their own KD Plasma theme, fair enough. And also some other changes, I couldn't find an extensive, extensive list, but as an example, I do know that Baloo doesn't index file content by default, which you might agree with, it might lower the resources needed for Baloo. On the other hand, it's very nice to be able to search for something as a content of a text file, so I don't know. Note that uh, Discover, which is Kitty's application for the store, installing stuff, integrates with OpenSUSE a bit worse compared to the previous systems as far as I know, so you might have issues with that. However, as far as I know, they're the only ones that are doing OpenQ&A, which is very interesting. So very quickly, what's OpenQ&A? You have a set of tasks that you automize to do on a fresh system, and then you take screenshots of what happened and you compare them to reference screenshots to make sure that everything works. And they do this a bit for Kitty Plasma too, like you open Dolphin and you check that Dolphin is indeed still looking normal and opens normally and you do some tasks. They do a little bit of open Q&A for Kitty Plasma, which is super helpful. So yeah, that's very nice. <laughs> it's something that should be known. And to be honest, I don't have much to say apart from that. You should really try it out, see if it works for you. Sadly, it didn't work for me for weird reasons, but it might be your distro of reference. Next up is Manjaro KDE, which funnily enough is the only distro I would not recommend on this list. So why is that? Well, they have some man management, let's say, problems. <laughs> Firstly, they forgot to update their SSL certificates and they suggested getting around it by changing the date of your system, which is not, an, not a good idea. And they did it again five months ago and this was the third time. So what? <laughs> And it's a bit of an issue because you can't actually trust that what you're downloading is actually Manjaro and not like Manjaro with some extra things inside of it that might be trackers or such because you cannot trust the website you're downloading it from because <laughs> its certificates expired. So not good news. They also had controversies regarding their treasurer. English is so difficult, treasurer. So basically somebody wanted to use major money to buy a 2K gaming computer, a Lenovo one, which might be useful for development, I guess. And the treasurer, for some reasons that aren't publicly known, objected to it. And then Manjaro says he stepped down. Some other says he was removed, the treasurer, for applying the policy. And there was like controversy. There were updates from Manjaro that sounded like they were written from a PR team with no idea what happened and just trying to cover everything. It, it wasn't a good look at all. They directly use Arch packages for everything and there's actually a lot of controversy I've heard about that. I, multiple times have I heard about Arch packagers complaining about how Manjaro uses and interfaces with them. 
And there's also a lack of communication issue. As an example, they packaged non-ready changes from Hasai Linux. Basically, they did this announcement in which they were like, we are shipping the very latest Hasai Linux. And the Hasai Linux project itself replied on Twitter with like, you didn't ask and please don't. And that was, <laughs> that was not a good look either. Also, allegedly Manjaro has been faking their DistroWatch score using bots, but I found no hard proof of this. It's something that I see a lot, but I don't have proofs, so who knows? I would suggest you to go watch the video Manjaro has a big problem by the Linux experiment, which summarizes everything very nicely, much better than what I've just done. and also explains what each of those things that I've just said actually means. So go check it out. Of course, all of this won't stop Manjaro from working for you. Maybe you try it out and you see it works perfectly. They do very little changes to Kitty Plasma, as far as I'm aware. Like they do apply their own theme and I'm not aware of any other customization of Plasma, so cool. They also do a nice thing, which is they ship their own KCMs, which is system settings modules, that, which means that when you open system settings, you see some modules that are not from KDE Plasma, but are from Manjaro itself, which means that Manjaro actually cares for their things, their own applications actually, to work natively on KDE Plasma, which is nice. So try it out. I don't recommend it, but try it out. Finally, for the normal distros, we have Arch Linux, and here's the thing. If you are unsure on whether you should use Arch Linux or not, d don't. <laughs> because if you need Arch Linux, you kind of know that you need Arch Linux. That is my take on it. Arch Linux is more of a for experts thing. And if you really want a Arch word, but don't know how to set Arch Linux up, maybe try Manjaro. I don't know. Honestly, I don't feel like I have to explain to you what Arch Linux is, especially because as far as I know, they don't customize key packages at all. That's the whole point, isn't it? Which brings me to the special mentions that use those distributions that take KD Plasma and do something completely different with it. And the first one is Theron OS. So what's the relationship with Theron OS and KD? Theron OS has a developer that is part of KD Plasma and that often does like patches to KDE, which is super nice and is a super nice person, I don't know what to say. So Fernos has its own theme that you might like or not, has very big task manager icons as an example. It has a very interesting panel layout out of the box for which you have icons centered and also on the top a clock and notifications, which is very interesting. It replaces some KDE apps with its own. As an example, you do get a custom kit, a custom store for installing stuff and has some nice things like a transfer application that transfers your file from your Windows install to Theron OS. I think it has its own application look too and also uses the full screen app menu, which looks okay. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> There are some better looking options nowadays, sadly, but that menu doesn't get a lot of love lately. And what else? It's a very interesting experiment that you might want to check out. Then there is Nitrux OS, which uses Plasma, but customizes it a lot. So you have a very interesting looking bottom dock deck, which as far as I know is actually Latidoc. Also, you get a top bar, with some applets and those applets work as sidebars, which is a very interesting approach. I think it uses custom everything. It has a custom style through Quantum, I think, custom icons, custom everything. They have like their own look. So they're doing interesting stuff in terms of packages. So you don't use APT here. You can use containers to install stuff or app images. Instead of the normal applications you would expect out of the box, like, I don't know, Dolphin, Discover, these kind of things, they use MAUI applications with MAUI alternatives, which look very interesting, but in my opinion, aren't quite ready for everyday usage, but that's something up to you to decide. So something very different, very bold, 
and if you want to try it out, it's Nitrox OS. If I had to make a guess, and I'm going to do it, Maui is currently also developing its own shell, which looks kind of how Nitrox OS customizes KD Plasma desktop to be. So I think that in the future, Nitrox OS will stop using KD Plasma and switch to Maui shell, but that's just a guess. And that was everything. So thanks everybody for following along. I hope that I said some interesting things, maybe no, maybe you knew some things, but maybe someone didn't know about everything. So, ah, I've been talking for 30 minutes, I need, I need to stop.